This video contains or may contain spoilers for Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight has a lot of hidden secrets. Some are just bonus pieces of lore or something similar, but others are much more relevant to gameplay. If you're playing for the first time without looking at any walkthroughs ahead of time, however, some of these things aren't entirely obvious or don't have explicit clues leading up to them, and you have to just figure them out on your own. In this video, I'll be listing some things in Hollow Knight that you have to work out on your own if you're not looking to any outside sources for help. The first thing I'll mention is something that I didn't know until pretty recently, which is that Elderbug gives hints on where to go next once you've made certain progress. For example, once you get a movement upgrade, he'll hint at a location that becomes accessible with that upgrade as well as where to enter it from. There was some cut content where Elderbug would straight up say that he gave hints, which should have been included in my opinion, because that would make this aspect much easier to figure out. The next thing is about another resident of Dirtmouth, Confessor Gigi. What you have to figure out is how to get to her, what services she offers, and what exactly her favorite food is. You can buy the simple key right in Dirtmouth, but you may not be walking all the way to the edge of town and seeing that there was a simple lock, plus the key is rather expensive so you probably wouldn't buy it unless you knew for certain that it would be worth it. Her explanation of her services is pretty vague if you don't know what she's talking about. She only directly offers it if you visit her while your shade is missing, and you probably wouldn't let your shade be missing if you didn't know that her services were an easy way to get it back. She gives you a hint about her favorite food, but you still may not make the connection to getting them from blood sacks or see any reason to buy the one from Sly Shop. Once you get to the City of Tears, you could miss the way to the Nailsmith, as there's really only one sign that hints at where he is. Quirrell suggests going to see him, but only if you've been to the deeper part of the Mantis Village and you've likely lost to the Mantis Lords once because you didn't know to get a nail upgrade before challenging them, and Lem mentions the Nailsmith only if you listen to him a second time, and even with those, you still have to figure out where exactly the Nailsmith is. When you get near the path that leads to his hut, you may be distracted by the area introduction to the City of Tears and want to go the other direction to explore rather than immediately check to make sure you didn't miss anything over on the left. Speaking of the City of Tears, there's a secret to one of the boss fights in that area that isn't immediately obvious unless you're looking for it, that being the chandelier above the Watcher Knight's arena that can be cut down to permanently kill one before the fight starts. You're going to have to fight five of them no matter what, but given how hard and nerve-wracking that fight can be the first time you do it, having even one less Watcher Knight to deal with is welcome. The next couple of things have to do with the location of another dreamer, Deep Nest. First is the drop into the area from the connection between the fungal wastes and Queen's Gardens. There is a lore tablet that hints at it, but you need Spore Shroom to read it, if you had even figured out that there were lore tablets in the fungal wastes that could be read that way. Once you get to the Dreamer's specific location, the Beast's Den, you may not realize that there's actually a functioning bench that's not the fake one that the distant villagers trap you on. When you're in the Beast's Den after you've been web-trapped and you have Hera on your map, you're probably looking for her instead of a bench, no matter how low your health gets. 
Then if you die in there before you find her, you'll have to find your way back to the beast's den, where you might eventually discover the real bench and realize that you didn't have to backtrack all that way. The next two things have to do with characters' quests. Of course, there's the infamous Delicate Flower quest. If you don't look at a tutorial for an easy way to do it, you'll have to figure out where the traitor's child's grave even is and the easiest or quickest way to get there from the Grey Mourner's house with the least risk of damaging the flower. You also may not realize that you could go along the path ahead of time and kill all the enemies before you pick up the flower and then not rest on a bench to respawn them so there's much less risk of damage. There may be shortcuts you could use that you hadn't discovered, such as the entrance to the crossroads from the Blue Lake or to Fog Canyon from the crossroads. Then there's the Nailsmith's quest for the pure nail and how it concludes. You may kill the Nailsmith because he tells you to and not entertain the possibility of sparing him because that might have a better outcome. You do get an achievement for killing him, but there's another you can get for sparing him and then figuring out where he goes afterward. You may not think to revisit the Nail Masters after you've learned their nail arts, or maybe you never even found Shio because he's hard to get to. There really aren't any clues that Shio's hut is where the Nailsmith finds his way to. Of course, we all know the deal with Millibel, but you may not have known the first time you played. Grimchild attacks her, but maybe you didn't have it equipped or upgraded when you first encountered her, or the charm wasn't in the game yet. She says the maximum Geo she'll take is 4,500, but you don't know that she'll take it all if you give her any more than 2,550, or that she'll take it at all. Then you need to figure out that she's in the pleasure house after finding the simple key to get in there, and that you can actually hit her with your nail to get back what she stole. Unless you were paying close attention to exactly how much you got back, you may not have realized that it's always more than what you gave her. There are many charms in the game that you really have to work for, but one of the most difficult and hardest to find is the lifeblood core. You have to be in the abyss with some lifeblood masks and land on the specific platform to see the stones lighting up for you to even get a hint that there's something you can get in there, and you may forget that you can equip Joni's Blessing and Lifeblood Heart to get you most of the way towards opening the door. Can you see how I named my lore-focused YouTube channel after this particularly well-hidden secret? There are some other things in the Abyss that you have to figure out how to get. When you're in the room where Abyss Shriek is acquired, you have to deduce that using Howling Wraiths there is the way to make it happen. Once you get to the corpse of the Shade Beast with the Bowl of Void, you have to figure out that you need to jump into the bowl in order to absorb the Shade Cloak. Once you figure out how to unlock the birthplace, you have to find the knight's egg all the way at the bottom right corner, then figure out how to interact with it, or that you can interact with it at all. And this is all if you've figured out that the Awoken Dream Nail will let you access the White Palace where the second half of the King's Soul is, and you've not only made it to the throne room, but whacked the Pale King a few times to get it. Then there are a couple of things you can do once you have the Void Heart. When Hornet intervenes in the fight against the Hollow Knight, you have only a moment to notice the Dream Essence coming from the Hollow Knight's shell, indicating that you're meant to use the Dream Nail then and there. Alternatively, if you do figure that out in time, you may not have thought of the fact that you could choose not to Dream Nail the Hollow Knight and would get a different ending and achievement for it. Aside from that, 
Some casual players may not even think about the possibility of there being more than one ending. They could just get all the Dreamers and the Hollow Knight ending and just leave it at that, not because they don't care about the true ending or can't be bothered to put in the effort to get it, but because they don't know it exists. Finally, there's every single breakable wall and hidden transition. Even if you look closely, some of them just really aren't that easy to spot. I will acknowledge that Team Cherry made the game this way intentionally, but as I said at the beginning, some things are easier to find on your own than others. Either way, we all found everything eventually. I have a lot of respect for the people who played Hollow Knight when it first released, as well as the various content packs, and were the first to figure these things out without any guides existing yet. Whether you were one of these players or not, were there any of the things I listed that you had to figure out on your own when first playing Hollow Knight? Any others that I didn't mention in this video? Let me know in the comments! Thank you for watching this video, and don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to my channel. I hope you're doing great, and I'll see you next time.